Yeah. Thank you for tuning in. This is your host, Dr. Fleck, coming to you live from a place near you. See, uh, I got this young gentleman right here who's been suffering from. Oh, uh, ankle injuries, just anything uh, related with the, the foot, really. Uh, bunion, you know, stuff like that. But mostly the ankle right now. Uh, but yeah. So predominantly, we will start with myofascial release. He's already done his lacrosse ball rolls, right? Plenty of videos on that already on the internet. So this is actually some B-roll for my ankle warm-up rehab, and I guess tendinopathy-based video, right? Just wanted to show you the bottom of the foot, and then I'll put I'll probably put up a diagram. So a lot of individuals that have bunion pain will have area pain in this area, right? Additionally, individuals with plantar fasciitis will have issues in this area. Okay, so there'll be a massive amount of attention as far as putting the ball in this area in order to get in between the cracks of your fascia. But additionally, let's not only focus on this area, right? Where the pain is immediate and most profound, but also in between the digits, right? Digits meaning in between the creases of the toes. So in between here, in between here, in between here, in between here, right? <clears throat> and there's gonna be a focus on curling the foot, right? Curling the foot and then extending the foot as well. And I need terminal extension. So if you need to use your finger in order to push the thing back, you know what I'm saying? Go ahead and do that. Whether it's this, big toe or your pinky toe, go ahead and work on terminal flexion and terminal extension. By terminal, I mean going to the furthest extent that you possibly can. Um, obviously, don't break your toe. You probably can't break your toe anyways, because you're doing bad with pain, obviously, but... <clears throat> Utilize a golf ball because it's extremely small. If you happen to have a smaller foot, right? Because I am I have a size 11 and a half foot, uh, US size 11 and a half, right? Uh, if you happen to have a very small foot or if you happen to be a child, no shade to you being a child, but if you happen to have a smaller foot due to the fact that you're lower in age, let's say that you're 12, 15, etc and your foot happens to actually be small. You can go ahead and utilize a golf ball or you can utilize a marble, right? A marble would be even smaller than this. But if this is your first time trying this out, you'll go ahead and use a lacrosse ball or a tennis ball. I don't have a tennis ball, but I expect that you know what a tennis ball looks like. And you would utilize it same exact way. Myofascial release has to be slow. You have to let the muscle and the fascia conform around the shape of the ball. And then micro movements. I said micro folks because rubbing really fast will surely get blood flow into the area, but we're trying to release the fascial tension, the neuronal grip that your muscles or your brain or your nervous system might have within the selected area. In this case, it's our foot, but you could take the same principle into anything else. If you happen to have carpal tunnel syndrome, extremely tight arms, extremely tight shoulders, you go ahead and place the lacrosse ball or hard rolling object there until you find a sticky knot and you roll it until the pain dissipates and decreases by a certain percentage. Um, now, I'm not telling you to spend one hour on one particular area, but it's definitely not 10 seconds and it's definitely sometimes not one minute because I have a large foot. If you happen to have a size 15 foot, you can imagine the amount of knots that could be throughout the entire aspect of your plantar fascia 
and shit, even your shins, right? Your anterior tibialis muscle, which uh, runs from just below this patella region and into the ankle jo joint, right? There are plenty of hot spots throughout this area that you probably never worked out. So for example, <clears throat> you choose a hard area, hard surface, or you choose a pillow, right? So that the ball doesn't really roll around. Put the ball down and you put enough pressure using your hands as a guide of support in order to roll around the area until you feel a release or you find a hot spot. Then you just sit there, you chill. You listen to the trees. Note that I said listen to the trees, folks, because that is a game changer on how you are able to breathe and relax into the movement so that you can then release all the tension within your muscles and your fascia. <clears throat> Take note of that. Listen to the trees. That is something that you should focus on because if you focus only on speed, 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 I gotta roll this out as fast as I possibly can, it's not going to work out for you. It's not gonna be a, a pleasant situation. I got a PVC pipe right here. Same concept. I need to roll my Achilles area out or the Achilles insertion, right? For those who are suffering from Achilles tears, what, what have you. I'm going to put as much pressure as I can right get on my hands maybe put some weight <laughs> obviously i'm not going to use my my plant pot but maybe put some weight so that there is more of an emphasis and drive down into the muscle right because we're trying to conform the fascia around that rounded surface and then once it has conformed at this specific area right then we use distal movements in order to restore some glide into how the muscles interlocked and move around and by that i mean once i have put my weight right i found a hot spot then distally i am going to rotate the ankle right plantar flex Dorsey flex, and I'm gonna let it sit there for an extended period of time until the pain dissipates. Then I'm going to move only one inch and do the exact same thing until 3D wise, you have confront you have confronted every single aspect of your calf or your foot in this particular case, right? But we're talking about the ankle in this video. So, proximally closest to the ankle, which would be the foot, you handle that. But also a little bit more distally, definitely handle that as well because tightness within the gastrocnemius and the soleus, which is a little bit deeper in, and the anterior tip, right, can all lead to restricted mobility and if you cannot you know if you cannot evert or invert etc your ankle in certain directions how are you supposed to do it at max speed at your championship game when everything is on the line you just think that your body is going to be like, oh, this is an important movement. Maybe I should access some more mobility. I don't think so. You're setting yourself up for a tense situation, but not only a tense situation, a situation that you haven't even been in before. You didn't, you didn't practice it. You never relaxed into the situation. But here in the comfort of your home, in the comfort of your gym, prior to playing your sport, etc., you can access different ranges and then all of a sudden a lot of the pain goes away so i know i'm focusing on the calf right now but let me just make sure that this is still definitely just focused on the on the calf for a little bit just now but as we mentioned in the video right before i did this little cutaway just like i showed you this little example with the lacrosse ball we're conforming the fascia over whatever rounded sur surface 
right? Doing the same thing with our feet. And we're pushing it into terminal flexion. Just a finger. And your partner could help you do this as well if it hurts too much. And we're gonna breathe and listen to the trees, listen to the birds outside. You're not only focusing on the pain, you're trying to relax the nervous system so that the confirmation is just a little bit deeper. And that's gonna help you access a lot more ranges and make you a better athlete. So here's another example from a different angle, right? We're going to hold this for an extended amount of time, particularly if you already know that you have issues in that area, right? I just showed you how to do the calf. I just showed you how to do the foot, the bottom of the foot, right? If you, if, if, if let's say that your, your second toe hurts, you're going to put the ball right below your second toe and just come down with it. Straight line down. And then you move on to the next toe. Because we're not only focusing on the area where the pain exists, you're gonna work proximately and distally, which also means even if you have plantar fasciitis and your plantar fascia hurts a lot, distally, guess what folks? We're gonna work on our glutes. And that's probably a game changer and enough valuable information to earn me 1 million subscribers. No cap. Because if you're suffering from a situation that is happening right here, it is a novel approach to think that, hey, actually the issue could be in your hip. Because if you are not able to internally rotate or externally rotate upon the crease and articulation of the hip, within the acetabulum, aka the ball and socket of your pelvis, if you're not able to articulate freely, right? And you end up trying to force those types of angles in your sport, well, guess what? There's going to be a compensation somewhere outside of this joint. If you cannot internally and externally rotate at the hip, your body is gonna try and do it at your knees. Your body is gonna try, try and do it at your ankles. Your body is gonna try and do it upstream as well. So I'm not saying that, I'm not saying exactly that if you have plantar fasciitis, oh, maybe your shoulder's tight. That's, that's not what I'm saying. Please, <laughs> don't be dumb. I'm saying work proximally, right? Don't just call it a day after that. You already have all the equipment that you need. Go ahead and bring some blood flow into areas that could, could be tight. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> uh, thank you for tuning in. That was probably a very long spiel because like you probably saw me in the gym and then all of a sudden I'm on my porch saying all this stuff repeat the video and uh, make sure you comment, like, and subscribe because why not? It's free. It's actually free. If you have a question, I have the capability of answering most likely through an AI automation that I have programmed. I'm a smart guy and I have the capability of doing so. So if you ask a question, I'll probably be able to answer it. And it'll let me know what our community is lacking. Right? There's a lot of people that are suffering from pain or simply trying to get better and they don't even know that they're tight in certain areas. And I'm here to expose some of those truths and situations to you. Thank you for tuning in. This is your host, Dr. Flex, coming to you live from a place near you. This audio was brought to you by Dr. Flex as well. I'm not actually a real doctor. I don't know if I've said that officially. <laughs> uh, a little bit of story time before we go back to the video. It's, it's a similar approach as Dr. Dre, right? It's only recently that Dr. Dre ended up getting his doctorate. At the point in time that they were calling him a doctor, it was simply because he was an expert within his field. I'm an expert within my field as well. And hence uh, the appropriation of said title. Uh, but at no point in time will I ever 
advertise myself to the public as a medical physical therapist doctor that that's not going to happen right this is a guys through the uh gateway of media and gives you an easy way for you guys to recognize it, okay so uh that's that's the little story time i got for y'all now back to the other video yeah so that you can see some of the exercises by the way just for everything in a nutshell this is how you myofascially release certain parts of your fascia anywhere right let's say that you don't have a lacrosse ball you can still do it with your pvc pipe your foam roller you can, you can still dig <clears throat> you can still dig into plenty of fascia it's a beautiful day, I'm not gonna lie. <sighs> Alright, bye. Right now, what we're teaching you is the sequence. So, you're gonna grab a couple of resistance bands, whatever you've got, and we're starting on the forefoot of the foot. So, since we're preparing for um, a lot of lateral movement, we're preparing for a lot of lateral movement and we want to turn on the glute med and glute max, but strictly from a single leg perspective. We're getting a lot of low intensity plyo work at the same time, and we're getting a heel lift, right? A lot of the cues that I'm telling my boss and friend is that keep that heel up. During actual play, it's completely fine for your heel to sink down in order for you to do whatever is necessary for your sport. But for the purposes of this warm up and the multiple hip swivels that we do, the multiple side steps that we do, keep that heel nice and high like you're wearing high heels. And then you'll see that I transition into this uh, resistance band circuit in which he is going to resist me from pulling and then we're gonna move on to some single leg stability uh, it's not as dynamic just trying to balance on one leg while keeping the heel high uh, but abducting and resisting the movement of the resistance band while that heel is high it's going to turn on that glute med and glute max as well. Thank you so much for watching thus far. You're fucking awesome. Drop a like, drop a comment. I love you so much. Bye.